Hey everyone, Scott here, and today I've got a Fusion World Digital Client uh, game replay to show you. This is a game I played a little bit earlier today. Uh, I have been playing the new Fusion World Digital Client quite a bit over the past few days, and uh, there was a really interesting play towards the end of this game, so I thought it'd be a good one to do a kind of replay of. Um, in terms of the, of the opening hand here, I didn't mulligan. It's maybe a bit questionable not to mulligan, considering this has like three super combos, which you want to be finding cards that you can like actually play proactively rather than super combos, which really are just more of a defensive option. Like obviously during the game, you want to eventually draw into your super combos, but to have this many in your opening hand isn't the best to keep. But considering we were going second and we started with a turn one into a turn two play that seemed fine for me uh, especially considering these both card draw or at least in the case of the android 18 it's cycling a card so i'm more likely to find the kind of ramp that i want for this deck um so nothing too out of the ordinary in the early turns obviously my opponent um starting first if i remember correctly yeah so um with this Beerus leader being a crit leader, um, it means it's going to put a lot of pressure on my life kind of early on. Obviously, we get the benefit of not getting attack turn one because you can't obviously attack first turn, so we don't have to worry about critting a life straight away. Um, my kind of thought process in terms of how to handle the crit aspect of the Beerus leader, sometimes with a crit leader, you do want to kind of put the pressure on them to kind of force them to awaken kind of early on just so they have that less pressure on you with the crit leader um, obviously there's different schools of thoughts of this because the crit leaders obviously don't draw when they attack on the front side so by them not awakening they're kind of denying themselves that card draw each turn so in this game my thought process was to just take the crit don't worry about trying to combo out of it i'm not going to lose cards from my hand even though i do start with so many super combos it's definitely not going to super combo against uh just the leader swing in these early turns so yeah uh just pretty straightforward here turn one um charge the big six cost i'm just so far away from being able to use it uh, all the other cards in my hand are a bit more useful to me immediately and I just put down the Goku turn one. Uh, so what I was talking about before here with the crit leader, I just decided to take it. I could have tried to use the Paragus to get out of that, but at this point I'm thinking I'm probably gonna use the Paragus turn two just to take the life myself and actually get a life to hand. Um, which I'm pretty sure is what I do here. Um, part of it also comes down to once they played this Krillin and seeing what they did with the Krillin. Did they attack with it? Were they trying to aggro me down? Or are they going to keep this Krillin, not attack me with it, and just try and prevent my own kind of awakening? Um, that's another reason I didn't necessarily drop the Paragus on the leader swing, is I wanted to see what my opponent's planning to do are they going to be pressuring me or are they going to be holding back but we'll see here with the krillin they don't end up uh, attacking me with it this turn so obviously they're not going too aggressive so maybe i could have used that paragus to get out of the beerus attack but obviously i didn't know that at that point i didn't have all the same information we do have looking back at this game in hindsight So in terms of my turn here, I put a Android 18 into the energy just because doubling up, it's, it's, I'm not planning on playing two of these. I could see myself maybe playing one this turn, depending on what I draw off my leader swing. But to give myself either the option of the 18 or the Paragus, otherwise I'd be charged, I'm not gonna charge a super combo. Uh, I probably am gonna use, is it, I always get these two backwards. Is this... This is Destructive Strength. This is Gigantic Meteor. So I don't really want to charge either of these. I mean, 
gigantic meteor I think eventually I do end up charging uh, a copy of this at some point but at this stage go ahead and see what we draw off the leader when just to give myself a bit more information uh, and then I do end up dropping the paragraphs here and looking back I think I probably should have attack my leader with this paragus i'm gonna kind of take i'm gonna kind of follow their lead uh, almost of what they did with the krillin and not awaken them um but maybe i should have just because i want to get them onto their backside i mean obviously at that point they're gonna start drawing cards but it, either way i'm facing down a 20k leader swing every turn it's just whether or not it's going to be crit or they're going to be drawing a card i think just based on what was happening in this game so far, I'd rather they were drawing the card and I had the ability to just take the damage off the leader swing and get a, a card myself from my life. So yeah, I pro I, looking back, I probably would have attacked with the Paragus. I suppose the other thought is that if I attack them with the Paragus, then they can uh, attack into it either with their Krillin or their leader say I, they did take the damage go down to four awaken they can attack into this and then not deal any damage to me and considering the fact that they held the krillin back the last turn it does also look like they're okay with kind of leaving me to the point that i can't awaken so that's i suppose another consideration but yeah we'll see what happens from here um because they don't have any kind of valid targets to attack into it means anything they play has to go into my leader so they play the hit here so they can go down to where they can awaken themselves but also the minus 5k means it's going to get rid of my goku here the other consideration that could have put the minus 5 on the paragus and then use the leaders uh on the other side to give this minus 10k but i think if I remember correctly, they're still going to get rid of this Paragus. Um, just doing it this way, I think, denies me the ability to combo with the, either of the cards I have. Uh, so we see here they put the minus 10 on the Paragus and then they play the one cost Weiss. Uh, and then we'll see here, do they hold back with Brillin? but they still have the leader swing, so they are still gonna put me down to the point that I can awaken. Because obviously they wanna be drawing a card themselves, at which point, yeah, they do come off the Whis. So I go ahead and waken. There's literally no reason not to with this leader. It's not like Broly where you kind of lose a life uh, when you awaken. So, this was, looking back, it was an interesting decision that I made to actually take this damage. I mean, obviously they had comboed up to 30, so I would have had to have used a super combo or two cards from my hand to get out of it. Maybe I could have used one of the gigantic meteors and got rid of the energy marker, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to save that for kind of maybe next turn or the turn after you know get these androids down on turn five maybe or if draw into the sub combo get that uh not sub combo the secret wreck get that down turn six rather than turn seven maybe although bearing in mind i, I do have some ramp in my hand so maybe even a bit sooner than that uh, so go ahead and charge the gigantic meteor at this point um, maybe there was a better card to charge, maybe the Gohan. Um, this does obviously represent a lot more combo power um, in the late game at the very least. But then the Gohan does give you a certain amount of card selection, so I don't know, maybe one of the tills could be charged instead. So here, rather than attacking into their leader, giving them a, another card from their life potentially, I'm going to go ahead and try and get something off the board in terms of the Krillin. I wouldn't be too um, 
heartbroken if they go ahead and combo to save this, which if I remember correctly, yep, that's exactly what they did. Um, the one thing I'm kind of thinking of when I was playing this game is obviously looking at how many more cards in hand I have than them. i uh, got a lot of combo power here. So despite the fact that, you know, I'm obviously at the lower life and you'll see, uh, I believe next turn I do even take a few more hits. Um, just having a very strong hand defensively with the gigantic meteors and the three super combos, I don't feel too pressured to kind of stay above the kind of two life threshold that we have. Obviously they're playing red, so they have this big double striker Goku. Um, so yeah, that was just kind of my thought process of what we're gonna see here now. I decide to ramp up and just play down the Gohan. I believe I grab, yeah, so I grab Destructive Strength. If I remember correctly, that was the only card I could take from the top three. I think I saw was another copy of these androids and the eight cost Broly and obviously the Gohan here can only get a five or less same. So that's why I went for the other ramp card. Even though at this point I'm probably... It's too late in the game for me to use this next turn. Or at least based on what we're going to see what happens on my opponent's turn. Uh, I'm not really ever going to get the chance to just take basically half my turn to play this and maybe play two cost. That's not going to be a, as good. I do want to start getting into the kind of five, six, maybe even the seven cost or the eight cost Broly. So yeah, my opponent just, there's no other target for that minus 10, so he gets rid of the combo power, combo power from my board first, which is obviously correct. And yeah, so he comboed up on this attack, I think, based on how much he comboed, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so he went up to 30k. I think he was trying to get me to use my leader skill to go up to 35, but lose an energy. Um, just with how many like strong defensive cards I have in my hand, I was never considering using the leader skill defensively. In fact, I don't think I used it once during this kind of entire game. Um, but we'll go ahead and see what else they do this turn, which is play out the big crit Gohan. Um, at this point, I'm not going to take crit, even though they do again. Combo up to 30. Again, that indicates that they want me to use my leader skill. Um, but here, I'm going to go ahead and use one of the super combos just to go up to 40. Obviously, kind of waste 5k a little bit there because I only need to get up to 35, but I thought getting rid of one super combo considering i still have two left in hand is probably better than getting rid of say a tills or a um and the vegeta which is or the paragus those would be the only other kind of cards i would consider comboing at that point but like i say i i, I have a few super combos so i'll go ahead and use those instead uh use the tills here to get rid uh get out of the pillin attack and i believe i get rid of is it the 18 to combo out of oh no 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 okay so this was the thing that is maybe debatable here once you're down on two life my thought process was i may as well be on one because they do have the big double strike guy um potentially to play next turn like i'm looking at this position with kind of a board here and what i have in my hand I do have the secret rare, but I'm one turn away from being able to use it. So I'm not going to be able to use that to kind of clear their board, which I do kind of really need to do. Um, so at this point, I'm thinking I'm probably going to play the androids down to get rid of the two kind of smaller guys. And at that point, uh, I'm going to try and kind of clear their board rather than try and aggro them down because I don't think I'm going to be able to do damage to them in a single turn so yeah that's kind of my thought process there of why i took that hit 
um, to go down to one life is because if they do end up playing the big five cost double striker next turn, obviously I can get out of it, but at that point I'd rather have the extra card in my hand and it kind of, in a sense, almost negates their double strike ability because when you're down on one life, you know, double strike doesn't matter at that point. Especially with having such a large kind of hand advantage over my opponent, just to kind of push that even further, to get more cards in hand to be able to defend myself even better on one life. Obviously, this does open up the door to the potential for them to use the secret rare, the red secret rare Goku, to attack into one of my battle cards, and that is something else I'm considering. Like next turn, I'm expecting to see either this big double striker, another one of these Beerus, although they've charged two, so it depends how many copies they're running, but I'm not necessarily expecting to see the Beerus. But in terms of the cards I'm expecting, it's probably this Goku or maybe the Secret Rare next turn. I'm already kind of considering that as potentially what they're going to play next turn. So yeah, pass the turn to me and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to attack into the crit Gohan. I really want to kind of get this off the board, so I combo up to 40k. Um, if this does happen to force like a super combo out of their hand, that's that's not the end of the world. Um, but I pretty much at this point have decided that I'm going to play these androids here just to get the two smaller attackers off the board. They go ahead, they don't try and defend their Gohan, which is great for me. Um, it just gets a 25 take off board. I play the androids here, use the energy marker, and KO both of their guys. So here, I'm very aware of the fact that obviously if I attack into them and they take this, that's two more cards in their hand. It kind of equalizes in terms of hand size and kind of overturns the advantage that I have over them a little bit in terms of having a much larger hand than them and it's it does potentially threaten lethal next turn if they don't clear these androids but I'm very aware of the fact that they probably do have a way to clear these androids so I'm not expecting it to survive another turn so I'm not expecting to be able to double strike them this turn then double strike them again next turn uh, just with their leader swing being able to give Take this down to 30k and then they do have the extra card in red where they can ko a 30k or less i think it is or is it 25k or less or is it even 20k or less actually now that i'm thinking about it but then again maybe they're not even running that card at all we'll go ahead and see what happens from here uh, so i passed turn there without attacking basically is the whole point of that um Again, don't think I'm going to be able to kill them in one turn. I'm not expecting the androids to survive. And all I would be doing is giving them two extra cards in hand to try and kind of force lethal through on me. Uh, so go ahead here, just use a good to get out of this attack. And we'll go ahead and see. Okay, so we see here that they charge the Goku for this turn. Now this to me, um, when I was playing the game, kind of signaled to me that they must have another copy in their hand because considering how many cards they had in hand, with this being such a kind of good card for them to have while I'm only on one life, for them to charge it means either their entire hand is this kind of good in terms of maybe they got more Beeruses and more Gokus because I don't know why you would charge this over any of the kind of like smaller cards you might have like a Roshi or something like that so as soon as I see this go into that energy I'm kind of reading that they do have another copy um, and that's going to inform the play I make during my next turn we we'll see here they use the 10k and then they played uh, a Fuwa to take it down to 15 and they Play the Goku here, can KO 20k or less. Uh, they don't add the card from life to hand, um, which maybe is something they should have done just to get a bit more um, combo power potentially in their hand and try and push for lethal that way. Um, here they go up to 35, so I use another one of the super combos on my hand. 
and that is the entirety of their turn. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and going to charge the ramp card, because again, it, at this point, I'm not going to play another one of these. Um, and just based on what they played and what they charged last turn, I'm thinking they have another one of these in their hand. And if we peek their hand, we can see actually they did end up having it. Um, but obviously, I didn't know that during the actual game itself. So my thought process here is I'm going to place one of these two. I'm going to play either the Vegeta or the Tills. Uh, I'm going to attack their leader with it, and I'm going to basically try and bait them into playing the uh, secret rare, their secret rare, onto this and attack into it to try and kill me. Um, basically, the reason I want them to be attacking into this rather than my leader is if my thought process is if they are attacking my leader with this guy for 30k say they don't have one of these 35ks this is the biggest guy they got if they're attacking into my leader 30k they may combo everything to try and push a lethal but considering how much larger my hand is than theirs i don't think they necessarily would go all out on an attack into my leader especially with my leader having the ability to get rid of an energy to give an extra 15k so i think even if i didn't play something for them to attack into with the secret rare if i just left my board clear and just basically forced them to have to attack it into my leader instead of a battle card i don't think they would combo everything i think they might hedge their bets just attack with this try and force the leader ability and they would keep the cards in the hand to try and defend themselves um, but obviously if they're attacking this guy into one of my battle cards that they've already minus that kind of means i don't have access to that leader skill and there's already like a bigger power disparity because obviously this secret rare itself gives minus 15k the leader can give minus 10 so say I play the tills here, they can take it from 30k down to only a 5k. So if they're already like 25k up just from the size of the two battle cards, I think they are more likely to combo their whole hand and kind of go for game that way. Because obviously if they were to kill my battle card with their secret rare, it deals the damage to me and I'll lose the game. And the reason I feel comfortable kind of leaving a battle card out on the board in rest mode for them to attack into to try and go for lethal is because i do have these two super combos i drew the super combo for turn and i do have the two uh, extra cards which are both 25k each now so that means the two super combos being 40k and the two extra cards being 50k that's basically 90k that i have they don't have a ton of cards in hand so i'm not expecting them to be able to get much higher than 90k basically my thought process is here is i'm going to play one of these two battle cards technically either way it leaves me two energy up the vegeta costs one less the uh tills obviously is larger and has critical um the energy from they both ramp but the energy from vegeta comes in in rest mode whereas the energy from tills comes in in active mode so either way i'm gonna have two energy up and obviously with vegeta being only 20k it means they can still get it down to 5k by just using the secret rare on it whereas with the tills they have to use the secret rare and the leader skill but my main thought is that if they are just using the secret rare say i play the vegeta and then they use the secret rare they attack into it they're not able to ko it because of how much kind of combo power i have they can then use the leader skill to minus it by 10k while it's been put down to 5k by the uh, goku secret rare and that'll kill it whereas the tools if they use the secret rare and the leader skill it'll be down on 5k so they'd have to have another card like the Whis or the fuwa or something to be able to KO it after that so the tills is more likely to survive into the next turn where I can try and push and try and do four damage to my opponent and then there's also the fact that the tills being crit means that if I uh, attack into my opponent with this and they decide to take it then 
obviously they're not getting the card to hand if they combo out of it that's gonna make it even easier for me to defend this if they do use the super rare on it so i go ahead i play the tills i hit them with the crit and they end up taking the damage so now they're down to three um which does kind of i think increase slightly increase the chances of me being able to ko them from here if this does survive the turn the way that i think it will um because i would have this 30k crit attack uh, i could use the leader for 35k and then i've got the secret rare here that i can just play not use its skill and just attack for 50k lethal potentially um obviously i wasn't able to clear their goku so i've got to face uh, two attacks before even seeing what they're going to play from here so i have to use uh, 5k to get out of it they play the roshi here and take their own life to get extra card in hand um just to give them a bit more combo power and i use the vegeta to get out of it that's another consideration of playing the tills keeping the vegeta uh, the vegeta has plus 10k combo power whereas the tills only has 5k so it does technically give me an extra 5k combo power in hand um, which could have made the difference here so we go ahead as soon as i see this i'm thinking either they have the secret rare which obviously we can see that they did or they've got another one of these gokus uh, in which case i'm gonna be facing down a 25k attack into my leader which i can quite easily uh, get out of with uh i guess at this point it probably would just be one of the gigantic meteors maybe i i'd use the super combo because this represents 5k less although with the two energy up maybe i want to use the cards that actually cost energy now uh because i'm potentially going to be going into this next turn um if it had been another one of these guys i probably would have um played the secret rare and actually done its effect to wipe the board um but we'll go ahead and see that what i assumed was probably going to be the case does happen here they do minus my tills down to 5k attack into it and they put their whole hand on it and uh because they played that roshi took the life they were able to get up to 90 exactly um and as we talked about uh earlier the two super combos and the two gigantic meteors represents 90k on its own so that's enough for me to get out of it without having to rely on this uh extra goku so we go ahead we combo uh, all the way out of it we use the two extra cards get up to 95k uh, and then my opponent here they just concede because especially now they've taken themselves down to two life just the tills into them with no combo power they'll have to take the crit damage and then leader into leader and that's lethal so i wouldn't even need to use the secret rare so yeah as soon as they don't win here they kind of concede the game and so yeah i thought that was a pretty interesting game to kind of show you in terms of like reading what the opponent potentially had in terms of trying to bait them into an attack that i know that i'm almost certainly going to be able to get out of um towards the end of that game they only really had four or five cards in hand so even if each of them had been a 10k kind of combo power it wouldn't have been enough for them to overcome the two super combos and the two extra cards that i had so yeah that's it for this gameplay replay uh, go ahead and leave a like if you enjoyed it and let me know what you thought down in those comments below.